Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 4, Chapter 6, Text 18. So, Sheetal will lead us and we'll repeat after her. Is that okay? Chita is here. Yeah, yeah, I, I try. Mm. Okay. Harjura Martha Kar Martha Madir. Harjura Martha Kamradir. Priya Lama Dukai Gunda K Gundai. Priyala Madhuriya Gudde Druma Jati Biranyesha Druma Jati Biranyesha Rajitam Venu Kichakai Rajitam Venu Kichakai Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada There are mango trees Priyala Madhuka and in Goda. Besides these, there are other trees like thin bamboos, chaka, and varieties of other bamboo trees, all decorating the tract of Kailash Hill. So we are continuing with the to hear the description of Kailash Parvat. Yesterday we heard there were so many different types of trees. Now there are different types of bamboos also. Also, of course, mango trees are there. Kumudo Palakalhara Kumudo Palakalhara Shata Patra Vanar Dibihi Shata Patra Vanar Dibihi Nalini Shukulam Kujat Nalini Shukulam Kujat Aga Brundo Shop Brundo Pasho Bitam Brundo Pasho Bitam Rugay Shakam Rugay Crodair Rugendra Ruksha Shal Yakai there are different kinds of lotus flowers such as Kumoda, Utpala, Shatapatra. The forest appears to be a decorated garden and the small lakes are full of various kinds of birds who whisper very sweetly. There are many kinds of other animals also like deer, monkeys, boars, lions, rickshaws, shalyakas, forest cows, forest asses, tigers, small deer, buffalo, and many other animals who are fully enjoying their lives. So Kailash Parvat is not just empty with some uh, snow on it. There's varieties of lakes, there's varieties of trees, there's varieties of birds, varieties of animals, varieties of... We also heard that there are the mistakes, there are the Kinaras, Gandharvas. Yeah, so it's... It's full of variety. Karanan Traika Padashwa Swair Karanan Traika Padashwa Swair Nirjushtam Rukana Bibihi Nirjushtam Rukana Bibihi Kadali Khanda Samruddhan Kadali Khanda Samruddhan 
There are varieties of deer such as Garnantra, Ekapada, Ashwasya, Rika, and Kasturi. The deer which bears musk, Kasturi deer, which bears musk. Besides the deer, there are many banana trees which decorate the small hillside lakes very nicely. Paryastam Nandaya Satyaha. Paryastam Nandaya Satyaha. Nana Punya Tarodaya. Nana Punya Tarodaya. We look. Bhutesha Girim Vilokya Bhutesha Girim Vibuddha Vismayam Yayuhu Vibuddha Vismayam Yayuhu There is a small lake named Alaknanda in which Sati used to take a bath and that lake is especially auspicious. All the demigods after seeing the specific beauty of Kailash Hill was struck with wonder at the great opulence to be found there. According to the commentary called Sri Bhagavat Chandra Chandrika, the water in which Sati used to bathe was Ganges water. In a, so this Alaknanda Lake means is the Ganga, Ganga water. In other words, the Ganges flowed through the Kailash Parvat. There's every possibility of accepting such a statement because Ganges water also flows from the hair of Lord Shiva. Since Ganges water rests on the head of Lord Shiva and then flows to the other parts of the universe, it is quite possible that the water in which Sadi bathed, which was certainly very nicely scented, was Ganges water. So one commentary called Sri Bhagavad Chandra Chandrika says that this Alaknanda lake is the Ganges water and Prabhupada is saying, yeah, sure, you know, it's highly possible because the Ganga flows through the universe coming also from the head of Rishi rests on Lord Shiva's head. Purim. <laughs> Vanam sau gandhi kam chapi. Vanam sau gandhi kam chapi. Yatratan nama pankajam. Yatratan nama pankajam. Thus the demigods saw the wonderfully beautiful region known as Alaka in the forest known as sau gandhika, which means full of fragrance. The forest is known as Saugandika because of its abundance of lotus flowers. Saugandika, Saugandika, full of fragrance. Sometimes Alaka is known as Alkapuri, which is also the name of the abode of Kuver. Kuver's abode, however, cannot be seen from Kailash. Therefore, the region of Alka referred to here is different from the Alkapuri of Kuvera. So Alka, where Kuver's abode, where Kuver stays, is called Alkapuri. You know, we have Nagpur also, like Sholapur, Nagpur, Kolapur, like a, a place where people live, town or a place where people live. So similarly, uh, Kuver is living in a place called Alkapuri. And, but this is different than this Alka, which is on Kailash. Kuver actually is a great devotee of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. Kuver is the treasurer of the demigods. He's a tre treasurer of the demigods and he is a very great devotee of Lord Shiva. According to Viraragav Acharya, Alka means uncommonly beautiful. Alka means uncommonly beautiful. In the region of Alka that demigods saw, there is a type of lotus flower known as Saugandika that distributes an especially fragrant scent. 
So a beautiful fragrant lotus flower called Saugandika. Nanda cha alaka nanda cha. Nanda cha alaka nanda cha. Sarito bayata puraha. Sarito bayata puraha. Tirta pada padam boja. Tirta pada padam boja. Raja sati vapavani. They also saw two rivers named Nanda and Alak Nanda. These two rivers are sanctified by the dust of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda. So Nanda and Alak Nanda, they have touched the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Govinda. Yayo Sura Sriya Shaktar Yayo Sura Sriya Shaktar Shaktar Vara Avaruya Swadishnyataha Avaruya Swadishnyataha Kridanti Pumsa Sinchantyo Kridanti Pumsa Sinchantyo Vigaya Rati Karshitaha Vigaya Rati Karshitaha My dear Shata Vidur, the celestial damsels come down to those rivers in their airplanes with their husbands and after sexual enjoyment they enter the water and enjoy sprinkling their husbands with water. It is understood that even the damsels of the heavenly planets are polluted by thoughts of sex enjoyment. And therefore, they come in airplanes to bathe in the rivers Nanda and Alaknanda. It is significant that these rivers Nanda and Alaknanda are sanctified by the dust of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, just as the Ganges is sac sacred because its water emanates from the toes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, so whenever water or anything is in touch, with devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it is purified and spiritualized. The rules and regulations of devotional service are based on this principle. Anything in touch with the lotus feet of the Lord is immediately freed from all material contamination. So Prabhupada is giving us, um, he's saying that yeah, uh, like how Nanda and Alak Nanda, they are sanctified, they are holy rivers. Because they have touched the lotus feet of the Lord. Similarly, Ganges is also worshipable because she has washed the lotus feet of the Lord. So anything, I just, anything, anyone. Question. Yes. You said that there was Mandakini also, right? Ganges River is called Mandakini in the heavenly planets. Yes. Yeah. So it was in the heavenly or it was at the Kailash? No, it was not at the Kailash, right? What? I'm sorry, I don't understand. The Mandakini River, because we have said that the Mandakini River uh, is in the spiritual world as Ganga. Not in the spiritual world, in the higher planets. It's the same river. Higher planets, yes. Is, yeah, it's the same so river. Is it that, Only her name that is Mandakini different. or... Alaknanda are same? Um, Alaknanda, we heard, was the... Uh, yeah, we heard that she it's the Ganges water according to the commentary of the... We, we were reading just a few verses ago that that's the Ganges water. And Prabhupada says, yeah, sure. It can be because it's Lord, Lord Shiva is holding the water on his head of Ganges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I just wanted to come confirm. So it's yeah. just Thank the you. name. Yeah, it's just the hmm. the river is the same. She's a long river, you know. Imagine flowing from heavenly planets to earthly planets and down to the hellish planets. It's a really long river. 
and only where is she's flowing from, she has different names. The name of the river is the same. Oh. And according to one commentary, the lake Alaknanda is called is Ganges water. So okay. here, what is the, the point to understand? Prabhupada is saying that anything which is in touch with the lotus feet of the Lord is immediately freed from material contamination. Means this spiritual becomes purified. That is devotional service. He's saying water or anything. That's the reason Krishna's paraphernalia is also taken care of so nicely. Because they are used in devotional service. The mridanga is never kept on the floor. Always has a cushion, you know. So because this is all spiritual. The damsels of the heavenly planets polluted by thoughts of sex life come down to bathe in the sanctified rivers and enjoy sprinkling water on their husbands. Two words are very significant in this connection. Rati karshitaha means that the damsels become morose after sex enjoyment. Although they accept sex enjoyment as a bodily demand, afterwards they are not happy. So there is sex enjoyment even in the heavenly planets as we are hearing here. And that is what keeps us all here in the material world. Another significant point is that Lord Govinda, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is described here as Tirthapad. Tirtha means sanctified place and Pad means the lotus feet of the Lord. People go to a sanctified place to free themselves from all sinful reactions. In other words, those who are devoted to the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna automatically become sanctified. So we know many people, so many of us, we like to go to the pilgrimages. Why we like to go to pilgrimages? Oh, Paab Dul Jange. We'll get rid of sinful reactions. We'll get pious, uh, what do you say? Well, we'll get pious reactions. We'll get rid of our sinful reactions. So the lotus feet of Krishna, the lotus feet of Krishna is also a place of pilgrimage. So if we are always absorbed in thinking of the lotus feet of Krishna, that's a sanctified place. Hmm? We can get rid of all our sinful reactions by thinking of the lotus feet of Krishna. Krishna's lotus feet has those wonderful markings. You know, the barley corn, the urdhva is the, the chakra, the um, lotus flower, the elephant goat, the umbrella, flag, thunderbolt. Then there is the eight-pointed square, and there are the four swastik on each side of the square and the four jambu fruit. And on the other foot is the lotus flower. Uh, I'm sorry, the conch shell, the sky, the bow, cow hoof shoes, calf hoof shoes. Then the triangle and the four colors on the side of this triangle. Then there's like a smiley moon and a fish. So many... Many devotees fix their mind on the markings of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. And one can get immediately sanctified. Also, um, fixing our mind on the lotus feet of the Lord can also mean to follow Krishna's instructions as he instructs us in Bhagavad Gita. Um, also to chant the holy names. Yeah. So the Lord's lotus feet are called Tirthapad because under their protection there are hundreds and thousands of saintly persons who sanctify the sacred places of pilgrimage. Now this is interesting to hear that we go to the holy place to get purified. But when the saintly people, when the pure devotees go to these holy places, they purify the holy place. You know, the holy places also cry. They're like, oh, we are taking on so many sins of so many people of Kalyug. How are we going to get delivered? And Krishna says, don't worry. My pure devotees are going to come. And when they'll come there, they will purify you. You know, so this is the, the, the purity of the pure devotee. 
that they purify even the place of pilgrimage. Shila Naratam Das Thakur, a great Acharya of the Gaudiya Vishnu of Sampradaya, advises us not to travel to different places of pilgrimage. Undoubtedly, it is troublesome to go from one place to another, but one who is intelligent can take shelter of the lotus feet of Govinda and thereby be automatically sanctified as a result of his pilgrimage. So Narottam Das Thakur, one of our great Acharya, he's saying, if it's not possible for you, like, you know, don't take unnecessary trouble to go to this pilgrimage, that pilgrimage. You fix your mind on the lotus feet of Krishna and all the sins will go away. Automatically you'll get purified. Automatically you're going to all the places of pilgrimage. Why are the places of pilgrimage um, important? Why? Because they are places of pastimes of the Lord or the Lord has been there. So anyone who is fixed in the service of the lotus feet of Govinda is called Tirthapad. He does not need to travel on various pilgrimages for he can enjoy all the benefits of such travel simply by engaging in the service of the lotus feet of the Lord. So simply by thinking of the lotus feet of Krishna, fixing our mind on the lotus feet of Krishna, following Krishna's instructions, we can get all this benefit. Such a pure devotee who has implicit faith in the lotus feet of the Lord, can create sacred places in any part of the world where he decides to remain. Tirtha Kurvanti Tirthani. So pure devotee, because he has firm faith in Krishna, he has this devotion to Krishna. Wherever he goes, he makes that place a place of pilgrimage. La Prabhupada would say that all our Iskon temples are Vaikuntha. Why? Because the Lord is being served there. And the, his devotees are there. So the Vaikuntha. So the pure devotee, he can create a Vaikuntha anywhere. Any part of the world. Wherever he goes. Because of his devotion to Krishna. Tirthi Kurvanti Tirthani Bhagavatam Canto 1 Chapter 13 Text 10 The places are sanctified due to the presence of pure devotees. Any place becomes a uh, automatically a place of pilgrimage if either the Lord or his pure devotee remains or resides there. So what is actually the, the purpose of going to a pilgrimage is not just to go for sightseeing that I went here and okay, I was stamped, I've seen this place. No, the idea of going to a place of pilgrimage is that we go there to associate with the devotees. Associate with the devotees means we hear from the devotees, the pastimes of Krishna, from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. That is the purpose of going to a place of pilgrimage, to associate with the devotees. And wherever the devotee is there, and so the devotees are so kind, they are traveling all over the world for our benefit. You know, and then now with pandemic, we saw that since physical travel was not possible, everyone was on the internet. We can associate with them freely on the internet. In other words, such a pure devotee who is engaged 100% in the service of the Lord can remain anywhere in the universe and that part of the universe immediately becomes a sacred place where he can peacefully render service to the Lord as the Lord desires. So wherever the pure devotee is there, because Krishna is in the heart of the pure devotee, the pure devotee is in the heart of Krishna. Wherever Krishna is there, wherever his devotee is there, that is a place of pilgrimage. The, wherever is the devotee is there, Krishna is with him. Wherever there is Krishna, the devotee is with him. Yeah, it can be it's any part of the universe. When the devotees were taking Srila Prabhupada on the streets of New York and they were telling, they were apologizing, my dear Srila Prabhupada, we are sorry, you have to see all this dirt and filth. He said, I don't see anything. I'm, I'm in Vrindavan. Well, that is Srila Prabhupada's consciousness, is Vrindavan consciousness. So the idea is if we go to the place of pilgrimage, we should associate with the uh, devotees, hear from the devotees, hear. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Did anyone want to add or comment? 
No. Okay. So we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much. Shri Madhva Gautam Ki Chai Shla Prabhupada Ki Chai Gaur Bhaktami Hare Krishna.